to be here with Nia Vardalis. Yay! Ah, I love this woman already. We're having like loquation lessons. It's, it's wonderful. Nia, you're, you are, I mean, we've seen you in so many things. I think many people, of course, know you from my Big Fat Greek Wedding. But starting on February 1st, or on February 1st, you will be in my new fave movie, Poison Love, colon, the Stacey Caster story um, on Lifetime. And it is, um, it's on at 8 p.m., it's this story is something I don't know what it's like a rip from one of many rip from the headline stories. I'm playing a real person. Yeah. Her name is Stacy Castor. Um, she's from upstate New York. She got into a bit of trouble. Her husband died. She got remarried. The other husband died. The police started looking at her and the story, uh, we're not going to give it away, but some people get murdered. Yeah. People get murdered. I, when I saw this movie, I was like, where was I when this was happening? Did you know of Stacey Castor's story? Like, did you happen to follow that when it was happening? I didn't. Because it wasn't that long it, ago. But I like those shows. I like mm-hmm. to watch those shows and figure out where, what they did wrong so that if I ever want to murder a spouse, yes. I will not. You never mm-hmm. call in to right. 911 and give your alibi. You yes. never say, I was late from work. Then it's you for sure. Yes. So that's what I've learned from these shows. So yeah. I like. I watched the story. I heard about Stacey Castor on one of the shows, and but no, I didn't go in depth until I started to research to play her. And then how um, she has since uh, died. Yes. Um, but how? What kind of research did you do? Um, she has two daughters. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a daughter. You have a, yes. Yes. Well, actually, the director and I talked about what would make someone do what Stacy did to at all costs keep her family together, right? And that I thought was really interesting. And he wa- they want us not to give away who gets murdered, who makes it, and mm-hmm. who did it. Mm-hmm. But the fact of the matter is this is a normal woman who is just trying to make ends meet. And she loses her husband, and that sucks. And then number two dies, and the police come after her, and it's largely unfair. Well, yeah, that's interesting because, of course, like, as I'm watching, the second the movie ends, of course, I'm on, like, a full Wikipedia deep dive about yes. every single thing yes. about this story. And it was very interesting because I, when I think about stories of, of women, um, often women who um, are accused of murder, uh, there's you always kind of feel like, as a woman, there was some kind of... Or not always, often or even occasionally feel like there's some kind of bias in the telling of the story. There's some kind of bias in how this woman is being portrayed or vilified or given a nickname or or whatever it is. And it was interesting in the movie because there's definitely not, it's not like, hey, matter of fact, here's exactly what happened. Yes, I agree. I think it's great. I do think that the press definitely, it's it's amazing they didn't call her, I don't know, Stabbing Stacy yeah. or something, but they definitely I mean, vilify Black the woman. I mean, Black Widow was pretty bad. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, they vilify the woman because the, there's some element of she's crazy yes. as opposed to, oh, these four white males and society has made them murder. I think what happened with Stacy is what made her do the heinous thing that we're both not talking about um, is, uh, and it's not necessarily that she did it, so tune in, um, but the, the I think what made her do it is preservation. And I believe that there are certain elements in every woman's life where you decide that you have to make it. Mm -hmm. Heidi Schreck references this in What the Constitution Means to Me. She says that she is obsessed with somebody and her very first instinct is stay alive. That's horrifying that we're still dealing with sexual assault, murder, at, at, at women still have to protect ourselves, double protect ourselves. Was it important to you to know whether she did it? She did the things she was accused of, or was it was that almost beside the point and it was her story regardless? Um, it was beside the point for me whether she was guilty or not, and the director gave us excellent advice because he said, everyone play it as if you're innocent. And I thought that was such good advice. So we all played it like we didn't know who it was of all of us who had done it. Why... why well, I'm I'm curious why he um, like I love that he did that, but I'm also curious why because he could just as easily have taken the approach of you play it like you did it. Yes, he did it because people who lie lie well. Yes, and that was excellent advice. So everybody who was lying in the film is lying really well. Did you talk with the other actors in it about like 
your own theories about things? Like, was that part of the... Yeah, we all talked constantly about it, but I constantly would... uh, I'd enter the day in the hair and makeup trailer and tell my new theory on why it was the mother who did it. Yeah. And then she'd be like, I didn't. And then we'd accuse Chanel Peloso, who plays Ashley, of doing it. It was just like a a fun thing of, well, what if? Yeah. What if? You don't get an answer. And it's... it's, um... It's frustrating, but it's it's like perfectly frustrating. It makes the story so compelling. Yes, because after that, it, well, the way we played it is you're not 100% sure, but then when you Google it, you go, oh, okay. Right. Got it. I'm here with Nia Vardalis, a star of Poison Love, the Stacey Caster story, and it's on February 1st at 8 p.m. East on Lifetime. When you that you struck some insane deal with my big fat Greek wedding because people were like, uh, oh, I don't know if this is going to be anything. And you were like, yeah, it is. And that and then you just were like, yep, like let it roll in because you knew and you trusted yourself. And even though there were all these people in the industry who were like, mm, I don't know, you were like, all right. See you. Like, yeah. see you at the bank. Uh, what happened is um, I'd written a screenplay first and couldn't get it read, and my agents dumped me. My agent told me I wasn't pretty enough to be a leading lady and not fat enough, in her opinion, <laughs> to be a character actress. And she said, what are you anyway? And I said, I'm Greek. And she said, well, if you were Hispanic, I could get you roles. Why don't I just send you out? Let's change the spelling of your last name to Easy, and I'll send you out for Hispanic roles. And I said, that would be largely insulting to the real Hispanic population, who are also trying to get the three roles out there. So how about no? Yeah. So um, she didn't want to represent me anymore. And so um, I went home and wrote down all the stories that I've been telling at parties for years, crammed it into what had happened the year before in that I got married, wrote my Big Fat Greek Wedding, didn't know what to do with it. I wasn't a member of the Writers Guild, and I sent it off to the Library of Congress to get copywritten. That's all I knew what to do. And then I couldn't get it read because I didn't have an agent. And so I jumped on stage and started doing it as a solo show because I'd seen Julia Sweeney and Jeff Garland do their stuff, mm-hmm. which wasn't stand-up but was storytelling. Yes. Rita Wilson and Tom Hanks and Gary Getzman came to the show. Tom Hanks and Gary Getzman were starting Playtone, and they said this should be a movie. We always joke that I handed Rita the screenplay so fast that her hair flew back. But what had actually she has happened? She such good hair. Oh, so such good hair. What had actually happened is while I was doing the play, several people came and said, "This should be a movie. I'm going to change it to an Italian family." And I said, "Here's the deal. I wrote it about a Greek family because there are no Greek roles for me, and I'd like to play a bridesmaid." And they were like, "Nope." And so they'd leave, and then I'd say, "Okay, no, thank you," and no, thank you to the money which I needed. Yeah. And then when Rita and Tom and Gary came and said this should be a movie, I don't know why I had the audacity to say, I'd like to play the bride. Because <laughs> I think, I don't, I don't even know. And Tom said yes. And I remember thinking, I should have said, and I want a pony. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't even know why they said yes. And then suddenly we were filming. And um, the deal that they made with me was we were equal partners, which is so beautiful. It's not that no one thought it was going to make any money. It's just that they're fair. Yeah. They're just so decent and fair. So we just had this amazing, fun deal. And I have to tell you, when it went into the stratosphere because of people like you who bought the tickets and went back with your families, it was lovely. Many to- times. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> to be able to share it with them was so incredible because if it had just been me, it would have been not fun. And then they did something unheard of and I don't even know if we've ever told anybody this but they sent all the actors bonus checks which really pissed off the financiers but we didn't care we reopened our deals and sent out checks because that's what you do Is and that- we're all friends to this day not because of that but yeah. because we were, we we're friends and that's why we did it you're a creative voice and you know you know this story that you have written yeah. better than anyone it's, it is not an Italian family story or you know a Latino family story, whatever it is yeah. it is it is the story that you wrote yeah yeah the day that you know that we filmed this scene where I asked the dad if I can go to college and he says no and I cry in that scene well we had a thing that scared me so badly in that one of the financiers wanted an out clause because they'd never seen me in the film in a film so they said we'll give her three days of filming and if she does okay we'll let her go on 
And I mean, <sighs> I was checking through the trailer for clothes in Sandra Bullock's size. You know, like I was like, when is Marissa Tomei coming? I was so afraid I was going to get fired. And on day four, I went out and the driver was there and I was being taken to set. And I went and I said to the producers, we're, we're still filming? And they were like, yeah. And I told them the thing that I had worried about. And they were like, we were never going to get rid of you. And on that day, we filmed that scene and I'm crying in take after take after take because of just the kindness of these people, the decency that they let me star in this movie. I can't believe you knew that there was like, you got three days. Mm. Like, how are you supposed to act under those circumstances? Yeah, I'm from Second City and people got fired all around me yeah. at the time. So I think it made me tough, but boy, that was hard. Yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Nia Vardalis is in Poison Love, the Stacey Castor story. It is so good. <laughs> uh, it's on February 1st at 8 p.m. East on Lifetime. Nia, thank you so much for joining me. 